So we've seen then the formulas for computing both the determinants of two by two and three by three matrices. I just want to illustrate the fact that uh, that formula once again generalizes for higher dimensional matrices. So for instance, on the uh, board here, I've drawn the formula for the computation of a four by four matrix. Just to remind you as well, we can expand along any row or column. I've just written the formula with respect to expansion along the first row here. So we follow the general pattern. I extract the A11 component and then I subsequently multiply by the determinant of the corresponding three by three submatrix that I get from re removing row one and column one from the original matrix. Then I continue along row one alternating signs. So there's a minus here, minus A12 times the determinant of its corresponding submatrix and so forth. And as you see here, uh, the computation of a four by four determinant involves fundamentally the computation of several three by three determinants. So for that reason, determinants are very computationally taxing, they're kind of messy. Nonetheless, there are many convenient properties and formulas for determinants that make the task of the computation of a higher order determinant actually much easier. So for instance, if we have a diagonal matrix, you'll recall that a diagonal matrix is a matrix whose off-diagonal components are zero, so this would be a nice four by four diagonal matrix. Now the computation of the diagonal matrix, again, I can expand along any row or column. So if I expand, let's say, along the first row, I have the number one, everything else will be zero in that summoned, times the determinant of the submatrix. Well, I can then expand along, let's say, row one for that submatrix, I get two and so forth, and by what's called the process of mathematical induction, you can prove the determinant of any diagonal matrix is equal to the product of the diagonal elements. So here we have a nice, simple computation, even though that's you know a higher order or higher dimensional matrix, I just get 24. Now just to reiterate, because the determinant of that particular matrix was non-zero, right, that indicates that the matrix is invertible, thus there's some matrix four by four out there I could multiply it by and then uh, yield the identity through that multiplication. Just to kind of see that property more explicitly, let's remind ourselves of this kind of go-to example we've looked at, a two by two matrix, let's say the matrix one, two, three, four. And just to remind you, the computation of a two by two matrix um, involves this cross multiplication. Essentially we go AD minus BC. Okay? And so the determinant of that particular matrix, let's put the vertical lines around it just to be sort of proper here, is a four minus six or negative two. So that determinant value, because it's non-zero, determines right, the invertibility of that matrix A. So in other words, A is invertible. I showed you previously that A inverse, in fact, looks as follows. It's uh, the matrix two by two matrix negative two one and three halves negative one half on the second row. Properties of the determinant, there are many of them. But I'm just going to mention two of the most prominent properties here. Number one, if I take the determinant of a matrix transpose, now remember the transpose operation involves eff effectively flipping the rows and columns of a matrix. So if I flip the rows and columns of a matrix, and I can, by what's called the Laplace expansion theorem, ex expand uh, when I compute the determinant along any row or column. Well, if I flip the rows and columns, that doesn't make any difference. I can still expand along any row or column. I'll get the same quantity I would have gotten if I didn't take the transpose. So flipping the rows and columns has no effect, no bearing on the determinant. The second extraordinarily useful property for computing determinants here is this kind of surprising property in some ways. The determinant of a product of two matrices is equal to the product of the determinants of those matrices respectively. So in other words, the determinant of A times B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Now, I just want to remind you, do note, as we mentioned previously, now matrix multiplication in general is not commutative. In other words, AB does not generally equal BA. Nonetheless, when I applied the determinant to a product, I do sort of retain a nice commutative property.